I'm excited to team up once again with my friends at The Botanist Gin for this episode of Basics to celebrate the 4th of July. I'll be making a whole lot of wings, so I wanted to start by making a batch of frozen Negronis using The Botanist to cool things down. We're starting by adding four cups of ice to the blender. Remember that this is a batch cocktail, so it makes about six servings. Next, we're adding four ounces of The Botanist, four ounces of a bitter Italian aperitif, and four ounces of sweet vermouth. Top it off with 12 ounces of orange juice and blend until smooth. Pour the drink into glasses and garnish with an orange peel. This drink would be great for any of your summer festivities from cookouts to vacation. The Botanist is a smooth, complex gin that is made at the Berkladdy Distillery, world-renowned for its scotch whiskeys. The same level of care goes into the Botanist, which uses 22 unique botanicals to achieve a delicate, balanced flavor that shines in a Negroni or any summer cocktail. Try it for yourself by ordering a bottle today. The link is in the episode description. All right, so you can definitely buy a pre-prepared party pack of chicken wings, but if you want to save a few bucks and or learn a little basic poultry butchery and or make some bonus chicken stock from the wing tips, you might want to consider breaking down whole wings. Let's start with the wing tips. We're going to run a sharp knife down to and around the joint, exposing it so that we can gently crack it open and run our knife in between the bones, ideally keeping them intact, but really just for aesthetic reasons. Then it's the same deal between the drumette and the flat, only bigger and meatier. Run your knife down through the skin and around the joint, exposing the point at which the bones meet, cutting the sinew and tendons around the joint so that you can get a clean break. Crack things open to see where you're going to run your knife, and carefully slice your way through. And there you have it, easy peasy. The wing tips are certainly edible, but they're mostly skin and cartilage, so you're best to save those up as you break down the wings and turn them into stock. Onto the wings themselves, whenever you're dealing with chicken skin, it's always best to get things as dry as humanly possible, which I'm going to do by virtue of some thorough padding with a couple paper towels. Then you can take things a step further by lightly salting the wings, spreading them out evenly on a rack set in a rim baking sheet and letting them sit uncovered in the fridge for 2 to 24 hours. Then the most traditional method for preparation is deep frying. This is best accomplished in at least 2 quarts of vegetable or canola oil heated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Drop in the chicken and fry for 5 to 8 minutes until golden brown and crisp. Keep things moving, especially in the beginning as the chicken tends to stick together, and crank up the heat because especially if the chicken's coming right out of the fridge, it's going to cool off the oil significantly. Fish them out and drain them on paper towels before saucing and serving. Now this might be the most traditional method, but I think it's one best relegated to restaurants. Not only is deep frying frankly scary, restaurants fry in huge, very powerful fryers, meaning they can fry in large batches without having to worry about a drop in temperature. At home you have to fry in small batches and the oil plummets like 50 degrees as soon as you add the chicken. So I submit that the best way to make wings at home is via the baking box or oven. First, to enhance the refrigerator drying tactic, I'm combining equal parts kosher salt and baking powder that's three quarters of a teaspoon each for two pounds of chicken's wings, tiny whisk until homogenous, and then I'm going to spread about half of it over the chicken, give it a good toss, and then sprinkle it with the rest to make sure that every square inch of the chicken gets coated in the good stuff. Then it's getting the same pre-treatment, two to 24 hours set on a rack and rim baking sheet in the fridge so that the skin can dry out and the salt and baking powder can work their magic. Then for somewhat easier cleanup, I'm lining the rim baking sheet with aluminum foil, placing the rack and chicken over top, and sending this into a 250 degree Fahrenheit oven for 20 minutes. And boom, just like that, you got oven fried wings. Don't those look delicious? I'm just kidding. We're just taking these guys out of the oven so we can now crank it up to 475 degrees Fahrenheit, preferably with convection. Once your oven's had about 15 minutes to properly preheat, the wings are headed back for 20 to 30 minutes, taking everybody out and giving them a flip after 10. 10 to 20 minutes later, depending on the strength of your oven and your character, what you end up with is two things. An alarmingly smoky oven, literally, and crispy, juicy chicken wings near indistinguishable from their deep fried counterparts. If anything, the oven fried wings held up better to saucing than the deep fried ones. But we're trying to make things more convenient here and a really smoky kitchen is kind of a lateral move from deep frying. So this time, not only am I going to lightly oil my rack, I'm going to lay down a generous substrate of baking soda. All the smoke comes from fat dripping down from the wings and the baking soda should absorb and mitigate it to some extent, which I was delighted to see work like a charm. Definitely still a little smoke, but only enough to set off the most fussy of smoke alarms. It helps 
to reposition the chicken when you flip it so that it's not dripping fat onto the same spot. Far and away my favorite method for making wings at home. A close second is grilling, which is basically just barbecue chicken in wing form. For this, I'm gonna utilize indirect heat, keeping the burners on the right side on full blast and turning the ones on the left all the way down, which pretty much turns the grill into an oven in and of itself. This one's been preheated for 10 minutes, so the grates are nice and hot. So after hitting them with a wire brush, I'm gonna thoroughly wipe them down with vegetable oil before applying the chicken, which I'm gonna pile entirely onto the left or cool side of the grill, covering and cooking for 10 to 15 minutes until char marks are just starting to show. All grills inevitably have hot spots, so the flipping process is gonna be one of reshuffling, swapping the paler wings with the better brown ones. Now, depending on just how sticky icky you like to get your barbecue sauce, now is when you can start applying the first of many coats. Basically, we're gonna do a similar dance with these chicken wings, cooking them over low heat for about 20 minutes, flipping occasionally and coating with sauce until they're lightly browned and cooked through, reshuffling as needed if anybody's getting too much heat, painting with barbecue sauce as we go, and then we're gonna crank up the temperature to medium high for five to 10 minutes until the wings and the sauce develop a deep char. Speaking of sauce, we gotta make some sauce. Let's start with the undisputed reigning champion, one cup of Frank's Red Hot, an eighth teaspoon each cayenne pepper and garlic powder, a half teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, and a half cup of melted butter. And there you have it, the pride and joy of my hometown region of New York State, buffalo sauce. And as I've mentioned in past episodes, don't be afraid to buffaloify the hot sauce of your choice. That is, mixing it with half its weight in melted butter. I've seen it do magical things. Next up, a very simple honey mustard, for which we're going to combine three tablespoons each yellow and Dijon mustard with a quarter cup of honey. And there you have it, honey mustard. Sure, you could just buy honey mustard, but then you wouldn't be able to say that you made it. And isn't that what cooking's all about? Next up, for that grilled variation of wings, ideally you want to use barbecue sauce. A simple one starts with with a half cup of ketchup, quarter cup of packed dark brown sugar, quarter cup of water just to thin things out a little bit, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, two teaspoons Worcestershire sauce, two teaspoons yellow mustard, one teaspoon each onion powder and smoked paprika just to give our barbecue a little bit more barbecue flavor. Then you use a half teaspoon of garlic powder or I like to grate in a whole clove of garlic as well as a couple dashes of hot sauce and a few twists of freshly ground black pepper. Tiny whisk to combine and simmer gently for 10 minutes until the flavors have melded and things have thickened. Put to use on the grill or just toss the fried wings in the sauce. Next up, how about some sticky gochujang action? Into the saucepan goes a third cup of gochujang paste, plus two tablespoons of brown sugar, quarter cup of water, one grated clove of garlic, and two tablespoons worth of grated fresh ginger, one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, and a half teaspoon of gochugaru. Same deal, tiny whisk to combine, and this time simmer for 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice and thick and saucy. Toss with the wings and garnish with sesame seeds. Next and last, our most restaurant-style recreation, Alfredo wings. Four ounces of finely grated Parmesan cheese goes into the blender, along with two tablespoons unsalted butter, and then over on the stove top, we're bringing a half cup each water and heavy cream to a bare simmer, and slowly streaming that into the blender, not all of it, just enough to make a thick, thoroughly emulsified Alfredo sauce, which would be great on pasta, but also pretty great if a little strange looking on wings. No matter what sauce you make, place the wings in a big old bowl, drizzle generously, and toss spiritedly to ensure Sure, even wing sauce adhesion. Plate them up, pile them high, garnish as necessary, and enjoy your sweet, saucy, spicy, crispy wings any way you like them. My favorite by default has to go to buffalo, but a close contender is the gochujang, especially if you had the foresight to cut the sauce with butter, making a buffalo gochujang or buffujang, I guess. Thanks again to The Botanist Gin for sponsoring this episode and for working with me this summer to create more seasonal dishes and cocktails. The Botanist is distilled in Isla, Scotland by the same team who crafts award-winning single malt whiskeys. The same care goes into The Botanist, creating a complex and balanced spirit that is great in a Negroni or any gin cocktail. I've loved trying it in a classic martini, but I've also enjoyed using it to make a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned, swapping the bourbon for gin. Try it for yourself by ordering a bottle today. The link is in the episode description. And please remember to drink responsibly.